This is a brief teardown of the Zambu Gateway. Uh, it's the let's have a look. There's the serial number, and it just looks like a sticker. And then you have the uh, plastic backplate which says Zambu. Let me just get some better lighting to show it off. There we go. So oh, let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so it's the HXG 1000S ELF uh, Zambu Service Gateway. Uh, it seems to be a very simple construction. It's I'm sure they just get a, a metal casing and then they thread the rest of it in. It looks like a, a basic switch. Uh, I've taken about I've taken off two screws. It just seems to be one, two, three, four, five screws at the back, or six screws at the back, uh, and they're lovely metal inserts. So I'll remove the rest of the screws and then we'll see what's inside. Okay, I've undone the screws, so now presumably it should just slide out. And there seems to be a ribbon cable slightly in the way. Let's have a look. Let's unplug it so we can take the main board out. Okay, it seems with a bit of persuasion it, it slides out without disconnecting the ribbon cable. So now we have easier access. Okay, uh, the funny thing is there are these, these little grooves where the board is supposed to slide in, um, but it was actually sitting under those grooves, so I'm not sure if that's intentional or, or an afterthought. Um, but yeah, the, the the little ribbon cable just controls the the, the couple of buttons and the, and the lights at the front. Looking at the board, uh, there's not very much interesting about it. We see a little AMD MIPS processor, 500 megahertz. Then we have the SD RAM, uh, four chips at 16 megs each. Uh, so that's 64 megs of RAM. Uh, not very much. Uh, then we have this flash memory there, that's that's where the software is presumably. Um, can't see anywhere else for the software to live. A little backup battery. Um, I guess on the back there's absolutely nothing at all, just a serial number. Uh, and it says that it's revision 3 of the board and this is 500 megahertz. Presumably they have different speeds, uh, but just a bunch of passives on the back. Um, and a little ethernet controller. 10 to 100 megs. What else have we got on here? Um, not very much really. Uh, what, what we're most interested in is, is the wireless module. And looking it up online, there isn't very much. This sticker was. Uh, let's get a better picture of it. So it says some sort of ID number. Uh, it was stuck onto this chip, which I thought might be one of the Wi Fi control chips, but no, it's, it's actually just, just a pickaxe 16 um, from microchip. So, uh, a couple of isolators, uh, crystal isolators there. Um, and yeah, and then you have the, the TI instruments. I have it on screen here, which is a proprietary proprietary um, low power RF transmitter for under 1 megahertz. So, either 315, 433. Well, under one gigahertz, I mean, so uh, probably operating at 115 megahertz. I don't have a, um, any equipment to measure that, um, but yeah, that's quite disappointing. So it's not; it doesn't seem to be using something like Zigabee, which, um, looking online, it's a lot of people say just use Zigabee. It seems to be some proprietary stuff, and we have another ID number on the back, uh, and it just says Zam Revision 1.4. Uh, but it seem it's just a Texas Instrument chip, and there isn't very much information about it. I'll have to look online, uh, but the construction is is quite simple, and I'll see if I can get the data off it. But I'm pretty sure it's, it's just running Linux with some sort of web server, and and not very much. So, a very very simple uh, cheap piece of equipment and yeah, rather uneventful. I tried to find more information about the wireless chip uh, and it seems to operate at 433 uh, 
megahertz in Europe and 418 megahertz in the US. Um, very low data transmission, so only up to uh, 76.8 kilobits per second, probably less considering um, that's at 1 gigahertz. Um, and yeah, it seems to just be a proprietary chip and the, the pickaxe is controlling it, so um, it's unlikely they will interoperate with, with uh, anything else out of box without, without some, some serious reverse engineering. Which is very unfortunate, it's a cute little gateway, um, quite cheap, offers a reasonably good service, uh, but unfortunately they're closing their doors and throwing everyone off their service, so it seems to, uh, to just be useless now.